There's some features in Final Cut Pro that are so simple, yet amazing, I wish that Blackmagic would just flat out steal them and put them in DaVinci Resolve. The first one is collision detection. So in DaVinci Resolve, you can already do ripple editing with the trim tool where everything past the cursor moves down when you do a trim edit. But if I wanted to trim this clip just a few frames or down to here, all these clips are just going to get eaten up and reduced. All of a sudden I'm losing this B-roll shot, this audio clip, but I wish that we're in Final Cut Pro if I want to do the exact same shot. And if I want to just trim this shot, we have this audio clip and we have these B-rolls. So if I was to trim just this clip, all those other clips move out of the way. So this didn't trim down and these didn't trim down. They're still attached to the same clip. DaVinci Resolve just eats into it and essentially deletes it. So I know it's non-destructive, but I can get it back, but I've lost that clip. And if I want to bring this back out, all of a sudden, all those clips are gone. Whereas in Final Cut Pro, if I want to trim this down, I can move it all the way down, be like, oh no, uh, I actually want to bring that back. I can just bring it all back to where it was without having to rebuild all those other clips. Another simple feature in Final Cut Pro is the ability to just add simple masks directly in the edit page. And I can animate these points, I can do whatever, and just simple, if I want to do a transition from one to another, if something was moving across the screen, I can just add a mask. And almost every effect in Final Cut Pro has some sort of mask that you can put on, or you can combine it with the mask right in the edit page, where in DaVinci Resolve, if I wanted to add a mask, I can't just search up mask or polygon. I either have to go to the fusion page or the color page to the power windows, and then I can add a mask directly in here. And yes, masks are really powerful in DaVinci Resolve, but I wanna be able to do this kind of stuff right in the edit page. Why do I have to come here? And also at the same time, why do I have to track only in the color page or in the fusion page. Why can't I just add a tracker effect plugin right in there and have the same features? It's doing the exact same thing. I would love for Blackmagic just to add mask right to the edit page so I can start masking and doing transitions and really quickly start building some simple transitions and effects right in the edit page. Something in Final Cut that I wish constantly was in DaVinci Resolve is the skimming playhead. The ability to just skim across any and all footage, pretty much anywhere in the timeline window, not just up here. Because in DaVinci Resolve, I can click and drag and skim, but then it moves where the playhead was. Where if I'm just looking for another piece of footage that I want to grab, I have to click on it and then I lose my place. So if I want to place a piece of B-roll footage there, I have to have either thumbnails turned on, or something else where I can't see the actual frame that I want that I'm looking because if I want to do this, then I'm hoping that that's the right one. But just being, just having the skimming timeline and being able to click anywhere, like right now I'm not doing, right now this is not doing anything. And I know that if I click on a clip, it's going to move it around. But I'd love to be able to have the same or similar playhead as in Final Cut Pro. And without clicking, I can just skim around and quickly see what I want. And if I need to move something, I just click. But even if I select, just like in DaVinci Resolve, you select the stuff. But I can skim and quickly find what I'm looking for without moving and losing my spot in the timeline. Another thing that I would love for DaVinci Resolve to steal from Final Cut is the ability to grab clips. And if I lift them up to have these kind of markers so I know that they haven't shifted in time. Like even a single clip, knowing that, oh, I'm I'm no longer where the in and out was. In DaVinci Resolve, if I wanted to move these two clips up to a, a new track, and now I have to look at the timing to try to get them back. There's no snapping to where they were, unless I press the shift button again. But I would love to have those visual indicators, because if you're moving a lot of clips, that just that little visual, just that little simple visual feature would help me make sure that I'm not shifting these by even a frame. If I'm not looking at the time indicator or it's a much bigger project, being off a frame is a big deal. So I would love for the position indicators when I'm moving clips to just 
pop up to let me know that yes, it is there. Another big thing that I would love for DaVinci Resolve to just swipe from Final Cut Pro is the range tool. Being able to do a quick selection and just delete a, a part of a clip without having to make an in and out is such a speed saver. Or if I wanted to lower just portions of audio very, very quickly, the range tool is an amazing tool. And it's really good just for making selects right in the browser very, very quickly. So being able to skim and then scan and then make my selection, organizing and selecting footage becomes really, really fast. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, in the media pool, it doesn't automatically go into the viewer unless you have the source viewer up and then you double click on that. But even then you have to press in and then out just to make a selection. And then you can make a sub clip right from, right from there. So we'll just name it and it creates a new subclip right in the media pool. Whereas in Final Cut Pro, if I want to just select this, I just hit F and then this clip is favorited in as its own little clip. So if I want to, I could quickly skim on a clip, press F, that part becomes favorited with that little green bar. And then I can make multiple favorites from one clip very, very quickly. So if I go to favorites, all those three clips are there from that original first clip. And you can do the same thing in DaVinci Resolve, but it's more sub clips and it's not as straightforward where you have to press in and then out and then do a create a sub clip in then out in then out. But you'll have to you have to keep pressing and creating uh, right clicking and creating sub clips. There's no quick way to make favorites the same way you can do in Final Cut Pro. So using the range tool in the browser and on the timeline would be an amazing add-on to DaVinci Resolve. And a bonus one, if DaVinci Resolve had a way to do hold frames like the way it's done in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve can do freeze frames, which is fantastic, but a hold frame is a little bit different where you choose the frame that you want to hold. So we'll go right there and you press Shift H and it creates this whole section in the clip. So now I can extend this out to hold it as long as possible or make it as short as possible. And if you play this back, it'll hold and then it'll continue on with the clip. So it doesn't destroy the clip, but it keeps it as one long one. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, if I wanted to create a whole frame, so in DaVinci Resolve, you go to the frame that you want, click up here in the inspector on speed change, press this little snowflake, and then it creates a freeze frame. Spot on. It freezes the rest of and the clip. Never let so to be able to do a hold frame, you do an edit, move that clip out of the way, then go to the speed change, press the snowflake, creates a, a freeze frame, and then we go back to the end. And then we can play it. that back. Spot on. We got a freeze frame and it plays again, but then it is now three clips instead of one that you have to now manage and add effects to or create a compound clip to do the same thing that in Final Cut Pro, it acts as one clip. So if I added an effect to this and I played it back, the whole frame and one effect that now you're managing instead of three different effects. And these are all simple things that just speed up the editing process and it will reduce the amount of clicks that you have to do over an edit over multiple edits day in, day out. So the closer that these two apps can start working together and start borrowing the best from each other, the better for everybody. Because these two apps are by far my two favorites to edit in. And if you're a Resolve user and you're thinking about making the switch to Final Cut Pro, make sure you check out this video where I talk about the pros and cons of making the switch. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.